Hello YouTube, I'm going to show you in this video how to use Team Viewer to both remote control work on a friend's computer and or create a VPN between the two systems where you can play games and share files back and forth securely to one another. So the first thing you need to do is bring up your web browser and you need to go to www.teamviewer.com Okay, and once you finally get to the web page, you'll see this great big green button right there on the main page that says download free for private use. Click on that. And then it's going to save as teamviewer underscore setup underscore en dot exe. Just click save. Once it downloads, all you have to do is click on the download and it'll start up the installer. Open file run. Okay, I got that error message because I already have TeamViewer installed. I'll have to exit it real quick and hit retry and he should come to this screen right here in which you can run team viewer from the installer and it'll just automatically start it or you can do the install if you want to be able to do connections anytime i really highly recommend that you do the install if you're having a friend just pick it up and run it you can have them select run and it'll automatically come up give them the team viewer number and the password to connect to and you'll be able to connect to it but for your own purposes let's go through the install click next user account control just click yes and then as soon as you get past that, you'll have this next screen right here. This is one that a lot of people freak out on. How do you want to use TeamViewer? Personal and non-commercial use, which is free. Company commercial use, which is a $799 license. Or both the above. For your own personal home use, you want to select the personal non-commercial and click next. And then right here, you have to select on the ULA, user license agreement that I accept the terms of the license agreement and I accept that or I agree that I will only use TeamViewer for non-commercial private use. Select next. Do you later want to remote access the computer you are installing TeamViewer on at the moment? Mm, that's the setup unattended access for now let's just say no. course after you hit next it's going to copy the files over and do the actual install of the program and you can see right here that it now come up and it's ready to connect it's given me my numbers it's given me the passcode and as you can see right here personal password that's unattended access to access the computer from anywhere at any time I set a password on this. I have no problem showing you what those numbers are because it does not show you that password. And this password right here will change every time I restart the program or my computer. And I can force it to change right there. So I'm really not too worried about showing the numbers. The odds of someone actually getting in through TeamViewer are very low. So now we're going to hit connect to partner. And it's going to come up for the password. On this system that I'm connecting to, I already have a preset password. So once I put the password in and hit log on. And just like that, I am connected up to that system. And at this particular point, it's just like as if I was sitting right in front of it. I can have total control over the system. I can shut it down. I can restart it. I can go in and make changes. I have full control over this system. I can work on it as though I was sitting right in front of it. And then of course once you're connected, it'll automatically pop up on the other person's end that you are connected. And then you have your actions here to send control alt delete. You can switch sides with the partner so they have control. You can lock the session or the computer. You can do the reboot right here. Why do that when you can just hit start? Go to the reboot that way. 
send specific key combinations. You can go to view, change the quality. I just leave it on automatic because it'll pick what's best for the connection connection speed. Change the screen resolution. I mean, you, you have all kinds of control. You can pull up the chat from right here and chat back and forth. As you can see, you can close the connection. You can expand it full screen. You know, there's there's just a lot of control you have. You can do voice over IP and sit there and uh, audio chat. You got the file transfer. You can transfer files back and forth to and from the system. There's file box. You can drop a file there and it'll send it to them. And then, of course, you have invite additional participants. You can invite a group, have multiple people in there. Remote printing, you can take a screenshot. You can record the whole process while you're in there. You can do the VPN from right here. I don't recommend it, though. You can do remote updates. I mean, there's just total, total control over the system. Okay, I'm going to drop that connection. Oh, did you catch that? Whenever you leave, it's going to pop up a box saying, thanking you for playing fair. When you disconnect, it's going to pop up a box on there, and it says, thank you for playing fair. You do not have to buy the license for personal use. Just click OK. Now, as you can see, right here on the main screen, you have remote control to be able to actually physically look at the system and remote control it as if you were sitting right in front of it. You have file transfer that allows you to connect up and transfer files back and forth to and from the system you're connecting to. And then you have VPN, Virtual Private Network, the VPN connection. If you are wanting to play a game with your buddy privately over the internet as though you were both connected to the same network, you would select the VPN and click connect to partner. On a side note, if your partner or if you're connecting to a computer that has sh a shared folder that has you have access to, they've given you the username and password, then uh, you can select the VPN and map a network drive in Windows Explorer, just like you would in the other video that I done that shows you how to do file shares and map the network drive. You would map the network drive just like that, and as long as you're connected up via the VPN, you will have access to that information. Keep in mind, however, that if you have a limited amount of data, like you're on a wireless card that's only got a 2 gig limit, you're on HughesNet or some of the other uh, service providers that give you a max cap, uh, some of them unfortunately give you a max cap daily. This uses a lot of bandwidth. Now the VPN doesn't use much bandwidth unless you do major file transfers or you play some very big heavy games over the internet with each other. If you have an unlimited internet connection, hey this is going to work great for you. To connect up on VPN, you select the VPN, just hit connect, put in the password, boom. You are officially connected. It gives you your IP address, it'll give you your partner's IP address, but it'll give you both IP addresses. It's not doing it for me right now because you well, know, I'm actually doing this over my own network, which TeamViewer will allow you to do. But otherwise it would show your IP address, the IP address of your partner, and how much traffic's going in between. Now in the event of that, that's how you map your network drive, that's how you know what the IP address is to connect to for playing games and will allow you to just pretty well do whatever. You'll also notice there's a meeting tab here. You can actually do meetings with TeamViewer. This is good for if you have multiple people working on a single project. I mean it just there's a lot of practical applications for this. Biggest thing is you got a friend get a hold of you and say hey man I, I want to play this game with you you know and yeah, we, we can't connect up over the internet if we can just do direct connect and play the game how can we do that well here's your way also if your buddy gets a hold of you and says hey man I'm having this problem with my computer and you happen to know how to fix it 
right here is the best way to do it it's quick it's simple you're in you take care of it you're back out no harm no foul everything's up and running your buddy's happy you're happy and psh, life goes on that's pretty well the gist of team viewer as far as operations however what a lot of people don't know just to be able to use the VPN you're gonna have to go ahead and make some configurations I'm gonna show you some of the best configurations you can set up to secure team viewer to the best possibility as well as install the VPN driver and everything else to be able to do that first thing you want to do is go to extras options and right here I'll show you what your display name is you can tell it start when start TV viewer with Windows or not you can set up a proxy connection if it's needed and right here is the LAN connection this is recently added in TeamViewer 8, TeamViewer 7 did not have this option that if you're on a LAN and you use LAN to LAN TeamViewer that it will actually accept it, accept it exclusively or you can turn it off to where it won't accept it I set it up like that so that way if by chance the internet does go down I can still remote right into the system that's in another part of the house and work with it security this is where you can set up the unattended access put in a specific password so you don't have to get the random generated password if you know that unattended password you can connect up any time and then you got the password strength most of them are standard four digits you can put secure six secure eight very secure ten I run mine on very secure ten digit you're not going to get in unless I give you that ten digit password and as I stated it changes every time you reboot the system you can force it to change anytime you need it to and it changes every so often whenever you connect and disconnect once it's determined that you're done you've done worked on the system it'll change the password where they now have to get a new password in order to connect to the system and then you can go to remote control you can set the quality I just leave it on automatic it's going to automatically determine what's best remove remote wallpaper that's one way you can tell someone connected up is your wallpaper will disappear and you'll have a black screen I set that because I don't need to see the wallpaper in the background I don't even care and all it does is uses up extra bandwidth and then of course as you can see you can play the remote computer sound deselect that if you don't want to the record partners video and VOIP you have to start that manually and it's going to automatically ask them for confirmation you'll have semi similar options under meeting um, computers and contacts that's only if you want an online account I don't even worry about that I really don't even recommend worrying about it it's kind of retarded if you end up having to do a format and a clean install half the time you can't get that account you have associated with that number to work right again anyway audio conferencing this is all your configurations for being able to voice chat video this is your configurations for video chat custom invitation that's entirely for doing your own invitation then you go to advanced once you get here you have to click show advanced options under the general tab you always want to make sure that you hide, hide online status is selected accept messages from trusted accounts is selected show computers and contacts on startup is selected and if you want you can disable the team viewer shutdown to stop people from being able to shut down or reboot your computer via team viewer and you can disable remote drag and drop integration if you want to be able to keep them from dragging files over and just dropping them and transferring them to your computer if you want them to be able to do that which 99 percent of the time or just about every time um, it's always going to be somebody that you allowed connection to and this is going to allow them to be able to easily do that so naturally I leave that deselected you'll want to leave the logging enabled as it logs and tracks everything that happens so if you come home your computer looks different you can log and find out why where who connected and ask questions <laughs> it's always nice to be able to tell when something happened to your computer you weren't ready for and of course advanced settings for connections to this computer access control you can get full access or you can set it to where you have to confirm all view and show custom settings or deny incoming I just leave it on full access click details will show you everything that's allowed okay 
you have the advanced settings for connections to other computers advanced settings for meetings and network settings you see this VPN driver monitor driver and print driver you have to install all those yourself separately here after you install TeamViewer you install those it will give you the VPN the monitor driver and the print driver the print driver will allow you to be able to print to your other your, your connected ends printer and allows them to be able to print from yours the VPN driver for the virtual private network if you want to do that is absolutely required then of course you have the team viewer options down here these I wouldn't even really worry about uh, you generally want to use the UDP do not deselect any of these three um, you can use the meeting add-in for Outlook if you want you can deselect that if you don't use Outlook that's fine you definitely want to make sure those two right there are selected though like don't use incoming port 80 recommended for web servers only I recommend that period port 80 is always wide open on most systems or almost always it's like the international hackers port because it's open so I wouldn't recommend using that unless you absolutely have to once you get the VPN driver installed you don't have to have the monitor or print driver but once you if you want them you would install them once you get them installed though just click OK and Team Viewer is absolutely ready. It's a great program. Works very, very good. Highly recommend it for both uh, a VPN connection to be able to connect up to shared folders and files on friend systems, copy files back and forth, uh, to be able to connect up to your friend system or let them connect up to yours to help each other work on problems, fix things. And it's also absolutely great for the VPN connection for playing games with your friends privately as though they were on your own personal network. This information is out there for absolutely everybody. And as always, watch, like, and share, and have a good day.